Welcome back to LA. I'm Richard Jefferson with my girl Chinea Gumake, counting you down to Lakers Clippers for the second game of our doubleheader. In our first game, the Nets blew out the Knicks a, to make the regular season series 106 101 in favor of who? The Nets. Yes, the Nets home, <laughs> own that. So in case we were wondering, you know, who run, I'm just kidding. Don't Knicks even fans. go there. We I'm all just know kidding, he Knicks likes fans. the Nets we, and the Cavs. We know it's your town, but, you know, the, the Nets are winning. Quality the, win. A very, quality very quality win. win against a good Knicks team. So I want to know what you saw in this game especially from our guy KD. You just heard it from Kevin Durant. He said, I'm only as good as my teammates, and his teammates showed up. Seth Curry is back. I think he went 6 for 11 from three. Edmund Summer. I mean, I think this is a season high, 18 points. Mm -hmm. They showed up. The sh they shot the ball well, but, like, at the end of the day, we all know it starts with KD. Kevin Durant is the first player with 25-plus points in each of his team's first 12 games of the season since who? Since MJ in 88-89, 12th straight 25-point game, tying himself for the longest streak in Nets history, thanks to our producer, Jose. So, uh, KD's playing. He's playing well. The bench is showing up. The role players are playing great basketball. The Nets, it seems like they finally figured it out. Well, and look, and I want to talk about the Knicks. The Knicks, to me, were ha why are you smirking? No, the Knicks, to me, were having, uh, they're, they're having a good season. I think, you know, obviously they're still working out some things. They, they, they've got their guys. They brought in Brunson. But I think that this team is literally one yeah. Piece of oh, I have a, from being an athlete. By the way, anytime we have NBA countdown, I hope Stephen A is watching. For some reason, the Knicks. Unfortunately, it's like there's a little. I did not say that. Stuff. I'm, I'm focusing on the Nets. The and positives. Anyway, let, let, look, look. We're sorry, let, Stephen A. Let's take a little look around the league because we had a lot of games tonight. My guy Luka Doncic. He He's was my guy in. Too. Assists as a team. What did you like most about how you impacted this game tonight? Uh, I just like how we were all on the same page, you know. I'm only as, <laughs> I'm only as good as my teammates, so, um, you know, them setting me up, them being there for me, helping me on defense when I'm guarding one-on-one, -on -one, helping rebound. So it's a team effort for me to get going because a lot of teams putting a lot of attention on me offensively, so I got to rely on my guys to get me open. And you guys get a big win in your first game for Jacques Vaughn as head coach. What was your reaction with him being named the new head coach and what is the impact he's had on this team so far? I mean he's been around this group for a while now. Been around his organization for a while so he understands and i um, happy for him. You know it's a huge deal being an NBA coach so it's on us to come out here and play extremely hard for him and practice well and um, you know prepare well so uh, it was a good first start for him. Three and five since he's taken over. Three and one uh, without Kyrie. I mean, look, the vibes are, are, are good. What do you feel like has been the biggest difference as of late for this group? I mean, we were struggling. You know, you know, always when you're struggling, you want to dig down deep and, uh, and, and turn the tide. So everybody was just locked in. We fine-tuned some stuff on both ends um, that fit our fit our, player, our personnel. And um, we was able to just play hard every possession. So, you know, we're looking forward to... Uh, you know, this next road trip we got coming up and, you know, trying to finish, keep keep getting better, keep building. Congrats on the win in your 13th straight versus the Knicks. Mm, nice. <laughs> Appreciate it. Back to you. 112-85, the final Nets over the Knicks. Coming up next, NBA Wednesday continues. Oh, these guys are playing because sometimes it's not just about getting the win, but how you go about it, and it has been a fun sight to see. All right, let's send it over to Megan Triplett. Thanks, Ian. Seth, for the eighth consecutive time, this Brooklyn Nets team has defeated the New York Knicks. How are you guys able to sustain the lead throughout this entire game? Uh, just playing together. We started on the defensive end. Uh, the first group came out, defended really well. The second group came in with, with some more energy. And we got stops, and we were playing fast, moving the ball, sharing the ball. Everybody got involved. Um, that's a fun, fun brand of basketball to play. You told me last week that it was going to take some time for you to feel that shot again. Well, yet knock down six threes. You finished with 23 points. How good did it feel to see those threes go down? Felt good. Felt good. I feel like I haven't made a shot in a couple weeks. Um, but I'm working my way back. I still got a little ways to go physically. Uh, but I'm just trying to put in the work every day, um, take it step by step. I know it's a long season, but um, my teammates, coaches kept encouraging me. And I saw one go through the net, and it felt like I was back at home. So it felt good tonight. And what does it mean to get this win for Jock Vaughn? He's the officially the head coach of this team and to do it against the New York Knicks. It means a lot. I mean, as soon as Jock was was called in it, be the interim, he he brought a great mindset to us. He was working hard every day. Just on that junkyard dog mentality of, uh, he don't, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to coach y'all the best I can every single day. And that's the mentality the players took on. Uh, we're bad, we, got, we know we're down some bodies and a lot of adversity going on. But um, like I said, everybody's been locked in mentally and taking it day by day and 
Well, it, it's, it's a good win for Coach, and it started with him. Side. Remember, the Knicks scored 76 points in their in the first half against Minnesota the other night. They didn't get to 76 until there was under five minutes to go tonight. Unreal. Really well done. Yeah, meantime, the Nets scored 69 in the first half. They didn't need nearly that in the second half to put this thing away. Let's talk about Kevin Durant and what he accomplished tonight. You said maybe 30 points. Yeah. He just he tricked you with a triple double, 29, 12, and 12. I know, and he missed that <laughs> early, which would have done it. You know, I thought it clearly it's early in the season. I thought it was the Nets' most complete game. I also thought it was Kevin Durant's most complete game. Just the way that he played, doing a little bit of everything. I like the little back and forth mm -hmm. with him and Julius Randle. I think Julius Randle maybe a little talking. I think he got in Kevin Durant's ear a little bit, and I thought that little fire into Kevin Durant. Not that he needs it, but I thought that gave him a little extra motivation. But just doing a little bit of everything. Blocking some shots, but getting the rebounds. That was the triple-double right there. And I love this. The backdoor pass from Ben Simmons, Kevin Durant with the layup, and one. And, of course, he missed the free throw, which would have given him 30, and I would have been right. We, we, <laughs> we, we always talk about his size, the length, that quick burst that he has. Because of his size, it allows him to just get by guys. Yeah, I loved it, too, because you're coming off a game the other night in Dallas, end of three games in four nights. He had the disappointing finish where he missed the free throws. What I loved about tonight, all right, so he's, he's scoring, as usual, rebounding the ball, passing. A lot of times, the camera caught him, you know, pointing out, like, you know, instructing his, uh, his teammates what to do. Yeah. You can tell he was really engaged. And I think when you surround Kevin Durant with guys that are going to work hard, could knock down shots, you could see it really got him going tonight. He has personally won 13 straight games against the Knicks, Amazing. Kevin Durant. Yeah. And they won eight straight against the Knicks overall. And you you just wonder, and you brought it up, kind of the back and forth with Randall, how much extra juice there is. Knowing, knowing it's the Knicks, knowing that you know, you can dominate the New York landscape if you keep winning games against A hundred percent. And, you know, he was linked to the New York Knicks a few summers ago before he decided to sign with the Brooklyn Nets. So that's always going to be there. He knows who's on that bench. He knows who Tom Thibodeau is going to try to design all these different defenses to stop Kevin Durant. And it didn't work. And by the way, once again, you know, we started the season, and everything was about the, how poorly they were playing defensively. There was a stretch sign in the game, and I get it. The Knicks' bad aim had something to do with it, but the Knicks went through a stretch where they missed 20 of 22 shots and 15 straight three-pointers at one point they missed. So, yes, that's some of the Knicks not making shots, but that also tells you how engaged the Nets are on the defensive yeah. end. You know, you talked a minute ago about Kevin Durant kind of being a floor general, general out there. Is he doing more of that in the absence of Kyrie Irving? I, I, I definitely think so. Yeah. I think he's taken on more ownership. I think he knows that they need him more than ever. And I think what's so huge and what's going to keep him uh, motivated and engaged when he's on the bench, other guys have to do something. That's why I thought tonight, and Megan just interviewed Seth Curry. Yeah. That, to me, out of, you know, winning the game is great. The way they defended is great. What happened to Jacques Vaughn tonight is great. Edmund Summer, the way that he started, getting the win. But for me, it's Seth Curry. That guy came into the game having scored four points all season. Right. He made one three-pointer. Seeing him do that, that changes so much because you need those other. Not only is he a threat to score, but you have him out there with Joe Harris. They spread the court, opens up the floor. All right, you brought up Curry. You brought up Sumner. Let's take a look at both of them and the way they were able to impact really right from the jump. Edmund Sumner having a big first half as part of that 69-point first 100%, half. 100%, Bob. But what you love about it, here's a guy that didn't even play last season. Now you're going up. So you're a free agent signing with the Brooklyn Nets. You're kind of been overshadowed by the guy you're going up against tonight. That's Jalen Brunson. But Edmund Sumner came engaged. I'll tell you what. He was impactful early on. And I think the scoring is huge for him. Running the court, I guess they were calling him turbo. With, you know, the speed that he has to get up and down the court. But I think his confidence is improving all the time. And then this was the big moment. You know, Seth Curry, who has struggled so much since that offseason surgery, you know, just didn't look like he was himself. He was the old Seth Curry tonight. Just much more confident, knocked down a bunch of shots. I love to play late right here from Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant is wide open. Kevin Durant can take that shot. He wants to get Seth Curry involved. Seth Curry knocks down another three. And you're talking about a guy who played a little over 11 minutes on the court tonight. He told Megan he's still getting back up to speed. That's a good sign. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, there was that moment where you had uh, Ben Simmons giving the pass to Kevin Durant, you know, back door. A lot of that has to do with the three-point shooters that you have out there. That opens up the court, and guys cutting to the basket will have layups and dunks at the rim. Curry 
coming back and playing like this, it changes so much because remember, he could start, he could come off the bench. Now, Patty Mills didn't play a lot tonight really because you had um, Seth Curry and Joe Harris making shots. All right, so let's talk about the defense now. We said on the pregame the last three games, the defense has been a lot better for Brooklyn. It was again tonight. They held to next to, to 35% shooting in the first half, 34% overall. And take a look at the last four games, the points allowed. I mean, that just jumps off the page. They were allowing 118 points a game. The last four, they've allowed 90 on average. It's, it, and, you know, that, that includes going up against some really good players like Bradley Beal, like Luka Doncic. Tonight, the Knicks coming off a big win the other night in Minnesota where they put up a ton of points. I just think Jock Vaughn, you know, attention to detail is something that, that has to do with it. But I just think, you know, everyone... You know, Kevin Durant is the star of the team. Everyone else, the next player, especially with Kyrie Irving gone, you, you fall way down on the list. So what do they all do? They all go out there. They work hard on both ends of the court. They get it done. I just like the way that they've been playing. And I, you got to give Jock Vaughn a lot of credit. He stepped right in. They did lose that first game. But the way that they've played since then, it l just looks like a different team. And like you said on the pregame, maybe it wasn't so much about Nash. It's the way that Vaughn delivers the message and gets it across about, we need to tighten it up on defense. We're better than this. Yeah, and I think he understood you know we're not going to win by outscoring teams that's number one but I also think it helps you know he's got Kevin Durant who you could rely on so much offensively and there were moments tonight where you thought uh oh here comes the Knicks they're going to make their run and what does Kevin Durant do he scores but the fact that Kevin Durant is going to defend he's going to get it done on the defensive end he's going after Julius Randle like I talked about the back and forth